In today's video, we're checking out the RaiseCube R3 i3 style 3D printer kit. Is it any good? Well, maybe not. Let's get started. Welcome back to Makers Muse, guys. So, Light in the Box were kind enough to send me this 3D printed kit, the Raise Cube R3, for review. And this machine is an acrylic style i3 kit, and one that I've been kind of looking to test one day. There's a few on the market, and they're definitely at the lower end of the price range for 3D printers. You can pick i3 kits up made out of acrylic for as low as 200 Australian dollars if you look hard enough. This one particularly is around $430 Australian shipped, which is actually quite high. And I really didn't know what to expect out of this kit. So it came pretty well boxed and it's all made up, as I said, out of laser cut acrylic. Most of the parts are about eight millimeters thick, which is quite a bit thicker than the old style ones made out of six millimeter acrylic. So the thing about acrylic is it's very brittle. So I was very cautious and careful putting this thing together. You guys may recall the original MakerBot Thingamatics and the Replicator 1. These machines were laser cut out of plywood instead of acrylic for the very same reason. Plywood is a lot more tough than acrylic, which tends to crack and shatter. More on that later. But apart from that, the, the kit went together pretty well. I have to, be, have to be honest, I was pretty surprised that the parts went together and fit together as nicely as they did. And I didn't really have too much of an issue there, although the wiring was kind of up to your own devices. Although the extruder assembly did come pre-made and pre-assembled with the wires running off. So it wasn't too much to assemble in that regard. What about specs? So, okay, so it's basically an i3 design. The specs, as far as I could tell, because I couldn't find the actual build volume on the light in the box page, is 210, 210, and 210 in the Z. Although I haven't been able to manage to test to those maximums for a few reasons, which I'll go into again in a little bit. It takes 1.75 millimeter filament and does have a heated bed and it's the style that's completely manually leveled with uh, screws and uh, springs. The, thing, the thing I didn't notice about this machine is, yes, it's not too bad in terms of stiffness, but every time I moved it, the bed had to be re-leveled and the nozzle height had to be set again. It also comes with blue, a blue tape on the bed, and I mean, come on guys, this isn't like the 2010s. Stop using blue tape. We have better solutions out there. Um, if I cared enough to use this machine more, I would stick some build tech or similar surface onto it. But yeah, it came with blue tape. Anyway, so why am I being so judgmental on this machine? Well, there's a few reasons why. First of all, if you are familiar with this channel for a while, I'm very much about safety. And this machine did require me to wire the mains power supply in by hand. So it actually came with the wrong plug for Australia. I had to just grab a uh, plug and strip the wires off myself and wire it in. And you know, they're right there, quite easy to access. And the machine is plastic, so yeah, sure the case will be grounded, I hope, depending if you wire ground or not, but there's nothing else really around. So yeah, this machine is on all the time when it's plugged in via this mains cable and there is exposed mains wiring, as well as a chance to accidentally get something into, this, into the actual power supply itself. Uh, mine's got a nice big ding on it, by the way. But the power supply does work, and you know, that's not a huge deal if you're an experienced builder. But for kids, I cannot recommend any machines that have mains wiring that's exposed. What's on next? Well, the extruder. The extruder assembly uh, politely sucks. Uh, so basically it has two fans and the main fan cooling the actual feeder gear and motor assembly as is standard. They've actually been wired up incorrectly. They all splice into the same wire, which goes to the fan pin header, which is the one you control via your G-code. But unfortunately, I'm not sure the guys who built the race cube realize that you're actually meant to leave this fan on full speed 100% all the time because you don't want to vary the speed of your cooling of your motor, you just want to vary the speed of the cooling of the part. Now about cooling of the part, the fans that came with it are completely gutless and one of them actually didn't even spin unless you gave it a bit of a head start and flick. So the parts were coming off kind of bad. So this is the first torture test cube I tried. The parts caught and it broke, unfortunately. Uh, after a few tweaks, which I did in a live stream recently, this is what I came up with. So this is using the uh, Filamentives Recycled PLA. It's a red and it's super stringy, which indicates to me poor cooling. And uh, similarly, I did this CAT, which is the Gayer Anderson CAT. 
and super stringing as well. And this is using uh, code from Slicer, which is designed to work well on Prusa i3 machines. So yeah, it really shouldn't be that bad. So I put it down to cooling as, an, as the main culprit here. So I decided to find another fan to try replacing the front fan that sort of sucked and I found this one. So this fan is a little bit of an improvement in terms of power. It's pulled from a slim form factor server. It also makes a little bit more noise as you can see in this clip. So what difference did that fan make? Well, this was the first test I did, again using Slicer, and this is a uh, just a very small version of the torture test, actually using the customizable one, which is on Thingiverse, which is super cool. Still stringy, super disappointing. So despite having this ridiculous fan, it's still stringy, and this is at 200 degrees Celsius. And this is with retraction as well, default in Slicer, which is just not on. I also tried Simplify 3D, and it didn't really uh, stick to the bed, as you can see in this case, but even if I did try it again and let it continue, I can see that it's having the same issues with stringing. And also it's really clear to see which areas, which uh, rods were closer to the good fan, which ones were less close to the good fan because this rod's great and this one's all melty and terrible. So you might be noticing, why are these models not finished? Well, basically I tried very hard on this machine and I did spend a lot of time getting it set up, getting it tweaked and trying to repair the cooling issue. But the thing is, it just stops printing. And I don't know why it's doing that, but it seems to be a problem with the interface and SD card. Maybe these need to be shielded in terms of giving the information back to the main control board, but basically randomly it just stops printing or even better, which is where I decided to give up with this print, it decided to drive the head into the print itself and then start printing in midair. So I don't know what's causing that, but basically that means this machine has had enough testing from me and I'm prepared to give it my final thoughts. So what are my final thoughts on the Raze Cube R3? Well, let's go a little bit further and let's have a discussion about kit 3D printers first ready to run 3D printers. I like to have this discussion with people when they ask me what sort of machine they should buy. I always ask them this question, what are you looking for? A hobby or a tool? And often people will say, well, I love to tinker. I love to just make things work and spend time getting them better. In which case I'll say, sure, a kit's a probably good idea for you because if you wanna build a kit, you're gonna spend a lot of hours getting it built from scratch and then you're gonna spend many more hours making it print well and keeping it calibrated. If you want to 3D print it as a tool, you want something that works out of the box within 15 minutes or so. So in that case, is this machine a good choice for a hobby 3D printer? Well, no, because at 430 Australian dollars on discount, it's far overpriced compared to machines like the ANET A8, which are similar, same kind of design, but are much cheaper and give you much more headroom for spare parts and upgrades down the road. And the thing is, the quality of this machine, sure, like for example, this is like the torture lattice I threw onto the Tronxy, and it's just as poor quality as these prints, but that machine cost $150 Australian shipped. I really wasn't expecting anything much better out of the box for a kit like that. But for this at that price point, yeah. I mean, the machine just stopping, that was kind of the, the deal breaker for me. But let's also just stop and consider acrylic frames in general. So this is not the first Raze Cube R3 that Light in the Box sent me. They actually sent me another one. And I have a video here of me unboxing that machine for Patreons. It's unlisted, but you can just click that card there, take you straight to it. I kind of felt something was off when there was bits of black plastic in the top that were shards of bits of black plastic. It was a train wreck. Basically, I think the guys at Light in the Box sent me a demo machine. They kind of broke down into core components, but it wasn't a flat packed kit. And acrylic is brittle. I wish laser cut acrylic was stronger, but it's not. And the thing is that really upsets me, you can kind of get away if you know what you're doing. But this machine, for example, right here along the side, Ray's cube is actually cut through one of the main supporting beams, which means that the cross-sectional area of where the R is, is extremely tiny. Even down here, you're adding all these stress points and stuff just to add a, add a name in. And that's just not on, guys. 
that means the machine's far weaker than it actually could have been. And it just goes to show that, you know, some of these companies don't really know what they're doing. They're just taking an existing open source design or stuff that's already out there, flinging their own kind of bits into it and then selling it as their own kit. And you do get you what you pay for often, but really I would stick with one of the cheaper machines because at least then you have some headroom to improve it. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this review of the Raze Cube R3. I'm sorry it was so brutal, but yes, this was my experiences. And no, I'm not gonna spend any more time tweaking it because as I said, there's other machines I'd rather invest that time into. It did come with some nice filament though, I will say that. If you enjoyed this video on Makers Muse guys, then maybe hit that like and subscribe. I've noticed a lot of people in my analytics are watching my videos, but not being subscribers. So I absolutely love you to hit that button. It means a lot to me. I love look, looking forward to seeing, uh, blah, blah, blah. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly on Makers Muse. That's the one. Catch you later guys, bye. and rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. He has actually walked in space.